and let's go ahead and get started. Let's see. Um, let's call the meeting to order. And Casey, if you would do the honor of uh, checking to see if we have quorum. Yes, I will. Uh, Chair Daly. Here. Vice Chair Morris. Here. Commissioner Ye. Present. Commissioner Corrigan. Here. Commissioner Valadez. Here. And Commissioner Wang previously expressed that she wouldn't be here. We do have a quorum. Okay, great. Um, Chair Daly. Yes. I just want to make a note that also council member Sally, or oh, vice mayor Sally Meadows will not be with us this evening. Mm, that's right. Okay. Um, so now let's go ahead and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Casey, if you would bring up the flag, that would be wonderful. I pledge allegiance. To the flag of the United States, United States of America. Of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, God, indivisible liberty, and justice, and justice for, all. for all. All right. Hang on a second. Let me adjust my windows here so I can see the agenda side by side with my video screen. Okay. Um, do we have any public comments on items not on the agenda? Uh, I have no previous requests for that and I do not see hands raised and we do have attendees present. Okay. So the first item for consideration is uh, the approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of October 13th. Does anybody have any uh, concerns or changes to the minutes that they want to see? Commissioner Corrigan. I just noticed, I think it was a typo on item one, that it said that it passed unanimously 200 and then there were five yeses, five approves. I will correct that, thank you. That was all I had. Can I get a motion to approve the meeting um, condition upon the correction of the typo? Yeah, I, I uh, move that we accept the, uh, the minutes with the correction of the typo. Seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. That passes unanimously. Indeed. The next item for consideration, uh, outdoor pickleball courts. Um, we're going to receive a report from the staff and provide some feedback on that. Um, at, at what point will the public comment on this, Donna? It will be after your report, is that correct? Yes, um, Chair Daly. Um, Donna Leggy, Recreation Community Services Director. Um, with us this evening is Recreation Manager Jamie Chu. Uh, she will give you an informational report on uh, the Outdoor Pickleball Project. Um, once she is finished, if the commission has clarifying questions, they may ask at that time, then we will open it up to the public and then we will be soliciting feedback and input from the commission that will go back to staff for implementation. This will not be going to city council. It's an operational level project. And so that will be the process this evening. Awesome. So what we're looking at is receiving a report. We'll have two rounds of, of commissioner um, participation. The first is just for clarifying questions. And then the residents will have an opportunity to, to be heard. And then we will provide feedback to staff, provide our thoughts and, and, and um, feedback on the program. So without further ado, um, Jamie. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Chair Daly and Parks and Rec Commissioners. Um, again, my name is Jamie Chu and I'm the Recreation Manager for the City of Los Altos. And I'll provide, be providing um, an informational uh, report and the staff recommendation on outdoor pickleball courts. So if you'll just give me a moment, I will go ahead and share my screen.
All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So for those that may not be familiar, um, the first slide that I have is what is pickleball? And the first one is that it is a hybrid sport of tennis, badminton, and ping pong. And also it is one of the fastest growing sports in the country. Looking at the pickleball court dimensions, essentially one pickleball court is 44 feet by 20 feet. And you can see the general layout, very similar to a tennis court, um, has the baselines, the non-volley or um, otherwise known as the kitchen towards the middle near the net. Um, and then obviously uh, the, uh, uh, left and right service sides. In comparison to a tennis court, you can see that a regulation size tennis court is roughly 36 feet by 78 feet. And looking side by side, um, you can easily get at least two pickleball courts in the same general size as what one tennis court will fit in. So uh, let's do a little bit of history. Indoor pickleball in Los Altos was actually introduced back in 2016 by our then interim recreation coordinator, Cherry Anderson. She was an avid pickleball player and introduced indoor pickleball at the Hillview Multipurpose Room. Um, that was a temporary court that was lined in the multipurpose room and interest soon grew and it actually expanded to include a second indoor uh, temporary court at the Los Altos Youth Center. Both of those sites were offered during the daytime, which was roughly in the 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. time frame. Um, again, interest continued to grow and uh, the community and the members um, started to request evening time frames. So the drop-in program was expanded to the city gym at Egan Middle School, which can actually support four indoor uh, pickleball courts. And as you can see, the drop-in program hours for the evening time frame were 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And this was over the course um, of obviously of 2016 through um, when we closed Hillview for construction. And then obviously when we closed um, most everything when the COVID-19 pandemic um, hit in March of 2020 here in Santa Clara County. So going, a going on, oh, one other thing to highlight, um, days that we ha had the program. Um, it was a combination over the course of that time frame starting in 2016, either Mondays, Wednesdays, or the combination of both Mondays and Wednesdays is when the program was offered. So that highlights indoor pickleball opportunities, but the question is, where do we have outdoor pickleball opportunities in Los Altos? And the question got pickleball. We currently don't have any opportunities to play outdoor pickleball here in Los Altos. So going forward um, in 2022, we are looking to, and we've heard um, quite a bit of feedback from not only the members and community members that participated in the indoor program, but heard from many of the um, avid players for outdoor that we want to continue to offer um, opportunities to play uh, pickleball, both indoor and outdoor. So to um, meet the demand for indoor, uh, excuse me, indoor, we're looking to reconstitute our indoor drop-in pickleball program at Egan Middle School. Um, we're planned uh, to bring that back in January 2022, and we're looking at hosting it on the Mondays and Wednesdays from 6 to 8 p.m. And again, as a reminder, um, Egan Middle School Gym can uh, support four temporary um, indoor pickleball courts. 
So recommendation, um, staff took a look at um, the four um, areas or parks that currently have tennis courts and we're looking to make some recommendations on where we can provide opportunities for outdoor pickleball courts. So the four tennis, um, the four parks that currently have tennis courts, that would be Marymead, Mackenzie, Montclair, and Rosita. And the number of tennis courts is currently listed on the table you see before you. Mary Mead has three, Mackenzie has two, Montclair has two, and Rosita has three. When staff uh, took a look at the various um, amenities that each of the parks had, um, pickleball, um, because of and similar to tennis um, can support either singles or doubles play um, because at least two pickleball courts can be placed in the area of a tennis court. Um, we can potentially look at four times the number of participants that may be present playing games. And so we took into consideration um, parks that would possibly be able to support um, additional parking um, in addition to having um, uh, restrooms available um, and uh, things of that nature. And so uh, that we definitely took that into consideration when we looked at over which tennis courts we were going to overlay um, with pickleball lines. And so at the moment, we are currently recommending that we overlay pickleball lines at one tennis court at Mary Mead and two, both, so both courts at McKenzie. We are not currently recommending to overlay pickleball lines at Montclair, partly because of consideration to parking and there are not currently restrooms at Montclair either. And then uh, uh, two pickle, um, overlaying pickleball lines on two of the tennis courts at Rosita. So the next two columns, you will see that with those um, recommended overlay of pickleball lines, we're currently um, would create uh, two pickleball courts at Mary Mead, four pickleball courts at McKenzie, um, obviously none at Montclair because we're not currently recommending to uh, overlay lines there. And then four pickleball courts at Rosita, which essentially in the last column would leave uh, two untouched tennis courts at Mary Mead, um, none at McKenzie because both would be overlaid with um, pickleball lines, two at Montclair and one at Rosita. Oh, whoops. And I realized I didn't have, um, I will bring up one other one because it will show, hold on one moment. I apologize. I have a lot of windows open on my computer. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start on this one. And essentially what I am going to share is, nope. This one. So if you look at a map of Los Altos, what we're currently um, high, going to highlight in orange would be where indoor pickleball is offered and then red is outdoor. Again, indoor, it would be located at Egan Gym, located at number three on the map. Mary Mead um, at number seven. Mackenzie at number eight and Rosita at number 11. And so as you can see, and part of what staff was trying to achieve was to provide um, opportunities to play pickleball outdoors throughout Los Altos. And so by, as you can see, by highlighting on the map, 
there would be um, opportunities throughout Los Altos, excuse me, to um, play pickleball outdoors. And one other thing that I will highlight um, before we get to questions is that, um, as I mentioned earlier, we had heard um, and we did have a list of um, community members and members that participated in our indoor program. Um, and we actually at one point um, at offered uh, pickleball classes um, out at Egan Gym. Um, but more recently, um, city staff, myself included, um, has been working very closely um, with one particular um, uh, avid group uh, for outdoor pickleball. Um, they're currently uh, playing out at um, Palo Alto in Mitchell and uh, really looking and uh, passionately supporting to get opportunities of um, outdoor pickleball here in Los Altos. And I will say they, um, they provided a wonderful opportunity for um, our recreation staff to be introduced to the sport. Um, and we got an opportunity to see the courts out at Mitchell Park. Um, and so again, city staff is uh, currently working um, and getting feedback from many of the community members so that we can um, make sure to build our um, pickleball opportunities in the best way possible here in Los Altos. So with that, um, that is my presentation and happy to answer any questions that the commission, commission may have. Commissioner, Thanks, do you want us to raise hands digitally or visually? Uh, I would prefer it if you would raise hands digitally. Uh, Jamie, the proposed pickleball courts involve new lines on the existing surface. Um, what's the condition of those surfaces right now? Are any of them due for resurfacing? Um, actually, um, so Rosie, when I first came in, um, which was when I started in 2016 here in Los Altos, um, the tennis courts were in need of resurfacing. We actually did resurface three of the four tennis courts. Rosita was the newest um, set of tennis courts, and so they were still in good condition but I believe the resurfacing actually happened in 2017, 2018. So the, um, the courts are actually still in fairly good condition and that was Montclair, Mary Mead and Mackenzie. Okay, and, and when the courts are restriped for pickleball, um, the, the nets, how are they gonna be put up? Great question. Um, so at the moment, um, what we're currently recommending uh, that obviously the tennis nets would remain in place because the two pickleball courts would be placed on either side of the tennis courts. Um, staff is currently working on the logistics of what that would, um, how that would work, but the pickleball nets would need to be um, brought out um, to actually set up so that it would be um, kind of shared use between um, pickleball and tennis. And again, that would also include um, signage that would need to be out to determine um, when priority and um, obviously etiquette rules as well too. But we're currently working out all of those details. And, and so the nets themselves would be on some sort of temporary stanchions and they wouldn't be anchored into the surface of the tennis courts? I believe so, yes. Um, so there's no physical change to the tennis courts other than new lines being on the courts. Correct. And one thing I should say, and I forgot to include in my report as well, um, anticipated timeline for um, overlaying the pickleball lines is um, hopefully to get that in place by spring of 2022. Have, have we gotten any feedback from tennis enthusiasts as to whether or not they feel like an overlay of lines uh, would undermine their experience? 
No, uh, great question. And so we actually um, had some conversations with our um, tennis instructors um, who teach um, quite a few lessons out on many of our tennis courts. They were actually very supportive because um, even too for some of the lessons and some of the younger players having some of those, um, the, the smaller courts um, actually they thought would be beneficial and helpful. Um, and so we did get some positive comments um, from our uh, tennis um, instructors. Uh, Commissioner Ye. Um, hey, Jamie, have you guys talked about um, how it would work when you get two different groups of people approaching the court at the same time? Because tennis kind of utilizes the entire court. And I liken it to like if someone's playing half court basketball and a full court team comes up, pretty much universally, it's basically half court you guys get off. And in our case, the pickleball, uh, pickleball people are gonna be using only half of the court. No, great question. And so part of what, um, the, and recreation staff is currently um, researching best practices, rules, regulations um, in some of our neighboring cities that do have uh, pickleball opportunities, outdoor pickleball opportunities. And part of what we're going to put in place is the etiquette portion. So what time frames would uh, place priority um, for when, when pickleball might receive priority versus tennis? Um, and then in addition, um, kind of the etiquette um, in one of the cities that we had researched that if there is another group coming in and um, basically having an additional 15, 20 minutes to kind of finish up their game, also to allow the next group of players to come in. Um, and so we would work to have all of that um, outlined on the courts so that it would be clear to players coming in. Okay. Uh, how does the city deal with it right now? Because I'm not um, up early enough. When like the Tai Chi people just refuse to move, what, what, what tends to happen? Ah, great question. So the Tai Chi is on tennis courts? I, I don't know about our city, but I've seen it when I drive around and I know how they will not move. <laughs> Um, at currently, um, on our tennis court signs, um, obviously we do have etiquette rules and it usually specifies um, where priority play um, usually occurs. Um, as an example, um, that there can't be just a single person you know, holding the court if there's a group of four that's ready to play. Um, and so obviously you you can only hold a court if both players are there ready and um, to play. There is a section or rules um, that are, is listed that if there, there is an instance where, as an example, um, like our lessons, if there is um, play going on and then lessons for the city is about to start, um, very clear outline of where the priority lies, but the very bottom indicates that if there are issues where um, either groups or individuals are either not following the rules, um, we usually do indicate that they can call um, the non-emergent line for PD. Obviously, it's the hope that we don't get to that point, but we do outline all of those steps that can be taken if some of those issues arise. Perfect. Thanks. All right, uh, Commissioner Valadez. Thank you, Chair Daly. Um, thanks for the presentation, Jamie. Well done. I have a bunch of questions, um, some simple. First, uh, I'm assuming the overlays are gonna be done in different colors, correct? Correct. Okay, great. Secondly, um, why are we leaving untouched courts? Is there a particular reason for that? And the background for my uh, question is, um, and it relates to my next question, so maybe I'll just combine them all together. My understanding, I've got so many friends that play pickleball, and I'm hoping that with my new knees, I'll be able to play at some point here, but they really talk about having lots of courts. They'd rather have more courts at one place than a few courts at several places. Um, why are some courts being left untouched, i.e. not overlaid, and then why can't we put more courts on a tennis court 
if we remove the fence, you know, the, the tennis net? No, great question. Um, so at the moment, um, the uh, the staff recommendation that we have, um, first part was to really um, provide opportunities throughout Los Altos. Um, and so that um, neighborhoods would have the opportunity locally um, to go close to where they are. Um, obviously, um, and the example I provided with Montclair, um, with the fact that there wasn't parking, um, we wanted to make sure that um, the number of courts um, wouldn't, or at least wouldn't impact uh, parking in the neighborhood in that area. But to your um, question, the, there is the ability to add additional, but staff wanted uh, to take the opportunity and see if um, usage and popularity warranted adding additional and potentially um, phase two, possibly looking at doing dedicated pickleball courts. And so this was kind of a first phase to kind of um, provide outdoor pickleball opportunities, which we currently don't have any at the moment. And so to kind of do that transitionary phase um, versus going from all or nothing. When you say additional phase two, when you say phase two, do you mean separate asphalt dedicated pickleball courts somewhere else? Or are you saying just more overlaying? No, so um, what um, would be a conversion of tennis courts to pickleball courts. Um, and obviously, um, as listed in the staff report as well, um, that, that um, if the interest and popularity um, warranted kind of that next phase um, with usage, um, that would uh, be um, planned for and put in the appropriate capital improvement program um, so that it could be done um, uh, as, a, as a full project. Okay, so the only reason that I'm hearing from you that you're leaving certain courts untouched, i.e. E. not overlaid, is because you don't wanna go full bore with pickleball overlaying. But there's nothing there's nothing yeah. other, there's no other reason that's actually stopping you like surface quality or trees in the way or anything like that, right? No, that is correct. We wanted to do a phased approach and also to um, obviously do a shared space between both tennis and pickleball as well. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner Morris. Hi, Jamie. Um, thank you for the report. I do have some questions. So um, the Hillview Court, there's only going to be one there and it's going to be indoors? I thought there was uh, something going to be outside as well, just indoors? So there, a uh, great question. Um, uh, we are currently looking at that particular project as far um, as there was planned uh, to be um, a single pickleball court and half basketball. Um, we're working out um, what those uh, possibilities might be at the, and that was the outdoor that you're referencing. Um, at currently inside um, with, originally we were thinking that we might be able to get a pickleball court inside the Grand Oak, but the nature of the, um, the light fixtures um, we, we didn't quite want to uh, bring pickleball inside there. And so again, that's why we were looking to reconstitute the indoor opportunities that we had at Egan versus at the community center. Okay, so I need to clarify this a little bit more. There will not be an indoor court at Hillview. So that is taking correct. away the one indoor court that was at Hillview. Correct. Okay. And are you also taking away the one indoor court that was at Lacey or will that come back? No, so at the moment, um, we are not um, currently utilizing Lacey in that uh, regard, at least for programs. So we would not be able to bring back the indoor pickleball opportunity at Lacey either. Okay, and then when, if one is going to be put outside at Hillview, when will that be done? 
details are still currently being worked out. I unfortunately don't have an exact time frame. Okay. And that would only be one pickleball court at Hillview? Correct. Okay. Um, okay. Did you do a count of how many, I'm assuming, it uh, looks like Donna wants to, uh, Director Leggy wants to say something. So regarding the pickleball and basketball court at the community center, is that specifically what you were asking? Yes. So that's still under consideration. Um, I think we're moving away from the pickleball court there as a result of this overlaying that's being done at the tennis court. What we heard from our, our pickleball players is you want as many courts together as possible so that they can rotate that a single pickleball court makes it more difficult. It's really great for beginners, but we're also concerned about the noise to the neighbors. Okay, and so will the basketball court be considered, the half court still be considered at Hillview? We're, we're looking at alternative locations. Okay. Okay, oh, thank you. All right, um, I'm guessing that you did a, a parking space count at each one of these parks. And as Jamie, you said, mentioned that um, that was one of the concerns. When I, so did you guys do a parking space count? I don't wanna get into a discussion area and compare how many spaces to how many people will be using them. So for example, if we have Mary Mead, and there's one, the two pickleball courts there, and you have upwards of four, you know, two to four people at each court. Did you consider that that's two to four additional cars? So which with a total of four to eight potentially coming in at once. And then did you do any research about how many cars are already there during the day for the tennis courts? No, great question, uh, Vice Chair Morris. Um, so consideration now, what did we do um, a, as far as looking at, diff and it, I think it depends on the, the time of day as well. Um, I'll, I'll use um, uh, McKenzie as a good example because the parking lot there definitely services a couple of different areas um, uh, for those that park, not only for those that um, possibly go to the park and to the tennis courts, but it also depends on the time of day. So we didn't do a specific count, but we did take into account whether or not there would be parking available. And that did affect the number of courts that staff is recommending um, to overlay with pickleball because of the number of participants that it would potentially bring in. Okay, so so just to clarify, so staff hasn't gone out, done the head count at different times of the day, specifically like at a park like Mary Mead to say, this is how many spaces are used at these different times. We have not done that. Okay. All right. Um, have, it, it sounds like you are talking to other park, um, other um, cities, park staff to see how this is working and see if it is working for them to do shared courts. Correct. Okay. And then um, how did you hear about the need for the outdoor? It, it, there's a group, but I heard that um, you were getting feedback that we needed them in town. So how did that feedback come to the city? Was it in emails? Was it, how was it? Events? No, absolutely. So um, a great question. Um, it was through email and actually um, I, a couple of um, meetings and even when uh, staff um, went out to view the courts at Palo Alto, um, it was um, by this particular group, it was shared that there were um, 75 um, plus Los Altos residents that were attending and participating in the Palo Alto Pickleball Club because that was kind of the closest um, one that they could go to. Um, and specifically, they, they did uh, share with us um, that they wanted um, opportunities locally here in Los Altos. Okay. And how about cost? Has that, that is, is there an assessment of what this will cost? 
uh, that is currently being determined. So I unfortunately do not have a cost uh, to share at this time. Okay, so it's things like signs, the restriping, the nets. I can't think of anything else at this point. Okay, and then um, have you considered a sign up board? Was that, dis are you discussing having a sign up board to keep the rotation going so, um, so that people don't have to argue about who is there? They sign in and they, it shows what time they signed in, their name, and then it lets the next group know when they're going to be done. Are you considering something like that? No, that absolutely is something that uh, we're considering um, to make it um, a positive experience. Okay, and then how about, how are you going to assess the success of the program? Have you figured that out? That is currently in our planning process. Um, and uh, I realized uh, we did actually um, do this presentation to our senior commission as well on Monday. And those um, very similar questions that you have, Vice Chair Morris, um, we have not yet determined exactly the metrics um, of what we would use of what would trigger maybe the phase two. And so that is something that we um, are currently working on um, as we prepare, hopefully, to implement in spring of 2022. Okay, so my understanding about pickleball is that it's super popular. We do have a lot of people in our city who do participate in it. Um, what happens, though, let's say it doesn't work at a particular park. What does it require to remove the pickleball? ball court? Um, I'm not as familiar, but I, I think we would then have to repaint those lines um, okay. and, and maybe go back to just tennis um, lines that would be there. Okay. I think those are my main questions for now. Thanks a lot. Commissioner Corrigan. Thank you, Chair Daly and uh, Recreation Manager Chu. Thank you for a great presentation. It was good having the history to how it's evolved. Um, my question, most of the, my questions have been answered. My one question though was, have you, what is the catalyst for kind of repurposing the tennis courts? Is there, is there basically low usage these days at the tennis courts? Because I did a, just some research saying that even though pickleball is growing rapidly, that there are five times as many tennis players in the nationwide as there are pickleball. So, um, and and the, the community, the survey that was done last year for the community center showed that 5% of respondents were v extremely likely to use pickleball. So it was like of the 15 options, it was tied for fifth last as a priority for people at the community center at least. Um, so for me, it's kind of a demand thing because we're, we're reallocating or multi or shared use of what half the tennis courts under consideration. And I, I assume those are all the courts in Los Altos total, the 10 courts. At so our city run, yeah. Your city run. So that's, I, I'm just trying to get a sense of like, did we, have we been looking at how the tennis courts, are they just low utilization in general, which case it makes complete sense um, to, to make this kind of change? Because uh, I've talked to tennis players and they say, yes, shared uses works, but it's still kind of distracting to have the, multiple lines on the court. Uh, so I like the fact that you're phasing it in. I'm wondering about the demand and, and, and current usage of the tennis courts by tennis players. Uh, Jamie, in, in answering Commissioner Corrigan's question, perhaps a source of data might be registrations for any tennis programming that we've had over the course of the last couple of years. How has that trended? No, oh, great question, um, Commissioner Corrigan and Chair Daly. Um, I, I would say a, a little bit of um, kind of two time eras because there was before the pandemic hit and then during and kind of after. Um, and so tennis, if you'll recall, was one of the, the few sports that um, during the, the height of and when things started to open up. They said that tennis and encouraging individuals to get outdoors. Um, and so when we brought back our tennis lessons um, during kind of our pandemic times, they have been very popular. And um, I would actually say um, 
just from the number of calls and kind of um, issues that were arising with kind of um, not legal tennis lessons. Um, so those um, that were not obviously working directly with the city to offer the lessons. Um, usage of our courts actually I would say increased during the pandemic timeframes because people were just so um, the desire to go outside and to do activity was there. Um, and so our numbers in tennis have been very consistent. Um, and actually thinking about it, it to further answer um, your question, Commissioner Corrigan, um, it, we do, I, I think ultimately re uh, recreation staff was trying to find a balance because at the moment there are not um, opportunities to play outdoor pickleball here in Los Altos. And so we were looking for that middle ground um, to provide opportunities where there isn't currently any locally in Los Altos. So we thought this was a good first step to see what and would give us actually the opportunity to look at and determining obviously what metrics we would measure that by, but obviously usage and how things were going and then um, to see if um, it would warrant maybe dedicating some space um, since it is, and again, it is popular and we found that even with our indoor pickleball program as well. And thank you. One, I guess one, the only other question I have, and this is more of monitoring the, the program, you know, once, once you implement it, but I also read somewhere that about 75% of pickleball players are over 55 which kind of makes sense to me because it is, I know I've played it and it's a great sport and it's good on your knees. But um, I would just be curious to see how that shakes out given the, 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 the plan from the you know, recreation department focusing on having more activities for youth, you know, young adults, teens, and you know, are they pickleball players as much as seniors? So are we, you know, it's just a competing objective, right? You're, you're trying to increase shared use as one of your objectives versus kind of a demographic. They're, they're, to me, they seem to be at odds. So I'd be curious to see how the data work out when you see the, the usage patterns. If, if younger people play this or if, you, if it is primarily for seniors. That's I will say um, I, I, in a little bit of additional information, I would say, um, for our indoor, um, obviously the introduction of indoor pickleball was through our adult 50 plus program. Um, but um, uh, they are looking to hopefully make it um, in air generational. Um, actually, when our recreation staff was out at um, in Palo Alto, um, that was one of the things that we heard from many of the players that were there is that families could actually come and uh, having it played and uh, experienced and getting to know the sport. Um, it, it, pickleball actually gives you time to react. <laughs> and so especially for someone that may not, you know, working on maybe connecting the paddle to the ball, um, it kind of gives you that opportunity, which I think um, even uh, bringing in youth, um, that was something that, that uh, we had heard that um, families um, sometimes came in to, to play as well. Thank you. Commissioner Ye. Yeah, um, Commissioner Corgan, it helps. It's kind of like um, uh, the way I would kind of, kind of picture it is think of racquetball versus squash. You, you kind of play squash on the way up and racquetball on the way down. Um, I, don't th there, I don't think there's a single varsity high school pickleball team anywhere in the country because it's something you kind of play on the way down and tennis is on the way up. So if we were to have public comment, I think we'd have a lot of people coming in who are parents, kids in high school who need to practice and we have limited courts. So you'll hear them a lot more in favor of having no extra lines at all. Uh, Commissioner Valadez. Thank you. Um you, you answered just just now about the 50 plus in the original program. That was one of my questions, but also uh, something else occurred to me. Um, is there a desire on the part of staff or, or a preferred situation that you not have to tamper with the actual existing tennis nets or can they be 
you know, pretty straightforwardly removed for the times when pickleball has priority. Because that, that vastly changes the density of courts you can have on a, especially in a large area like Rosita or, or um, Mary Mead. Those stanchions that hold the nets are permanent. Really, that's interesting. Okay. Um, then the second question is, uh, well, it's more of a, it's more of a, no, it is a question. Have we offered pickleball classes? We have. And were they tailored to 50 plus or were they all ages? All ages. Okay. Um, Cause that leads to my comment that um, I think pickleball got really popular amongst the elder set, but if you look, I mean, I've watched many tournaments on TV of uh, collegiate and, and young adult players that play pickleball and it's insane and really fun. But, you know, so there, there are various levels now and I, I just find it amongst the community, it's, it's becoming more and more of an all ages um, thing. So I, I just wondered if you had seen any of that trend within the groups that you've been talking to or, or was it mostly elders? I think it, um, and obviously our program started there, but I think there, um, it, it is growing and it definitely is, from what we've heard, it is starting to go um, and something that families can do together. Thank you. Commissioner Morris. Um, I actually have two more questions that came up. Um, you just mentioned uh, in response to Commissioner Valadez a question about the classes. Um, did you, do you have any um, data or information or do you remember how many younger people were in those classes? And then in general, how well attended were the classes? Um, so um, I think it would be important to highlight it was one season and so there were, I think, Casey might remember as well because she answered and entered the information, but I think it was roughly four to six classes that we that we offered during that season. Um, but and it was it was two seasons, Jamie. Oh, two seasons. <clears throat> six, 2016 and 2017. Um, and I could pull up the exact number of people, but I believe it was about 30. And it could have been you, as many as 36. Okay. And were the ages tracked at all for that? We can track the ages. Um, I didn't look at it when I was pulling the report to notify um, these people that we were having the meeting, but um, the ages are tracked and we offered that class for 16 to no end age. Okay, great. Okay, and then my last question, thank you, is about does Los Altos Hills have any pickle board Oh boy, if I can speak English, we're going to do well. Any pickleball courts itself? I'm actually not sure. No. Uh, okay. They don't have any public courts, but I'm a member at the Fremont Hills Country Club, and we have converted many of the tennis courts to full-time pickleball courts because okay. there's a shift within the tennis community to pickleball. And actually, that brings up another question. So I, I, I'm not even sure. Does the do the hills even have tennis courts? Public tennis courts? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. If we don't have any more questions for clarification, let's go ahead and and uh, open it up to public comment. How many? Um, how many members, how many residents do we have interested in commenting? I am going to ask, we did have more members join, so I'm going to ask if anyone is interested that they could raise their hand virtually. Um, at this time though, I do only have one person. Oh, it looks like I now have three. Um, okay. So three people, four people. Great. Go ahead with the public comment. Casey, and, can handle that. And Chair Daly, would you like to get, so it is still four people, would you like to yeah. give them the three minutes? Yes, please. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with the first person who emailed me, and that is Dorit Perry. I'm going to allow her to talk right now. Um, Dorit, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. It's my mic on. 
Yeah, it is. So give me one second and I will start your three minute timer. And Casey, um, do you have that diagram that I sent you at all? I do. I sent it to the commissioners. Okay. All right. So they, they have received it at this time. So um, I'd like to try to use the time very well, although three minutes is not enough time to share this passion that has been consuming me for the last five years. I play pickleball five days a week for many hours. Um, the popularity is skyrocketing and every city around us has pickleball. I mean, Los Altos is the one city, is the only city without public pickleball courts. Because of that, we've had a chance to look at all the good examples of the cities around us, of how they've implemented pickleball and those cities that have active pickleball programs and those cities where the pickleball programs don't exist and it's really just a court, a piece of asphalt. I'm a member of the Palo Alto Club. I'm a dues paying member. And the club has grown from 50 members to 250 members to today over 700 members, dues paying members, because pickleball is so popular. And it's really about the community. The basic nature of the sport is unlike any other in that quantity counts, as the commissioner noted, having a lot of pickleball courts is more important than distributing pickleball courts all through the city. In fact, the concept of Mary Mead for me is a non-starter. Two courts simply will not create a program. The key to success is to have a central location with many courts. Rosita will easily support 10 pickleball courts We've had a pickleball expert for Northern California come and measure Rosita courts. And I suggest that we rely on the experts. Rosita can easily contain 10 courts. Um, Mackenzie can easily contain six courts. To have any less than that number in any one location means that the trial will be non-conclusive. You need the mass. People come in and out of games, shuffle around, meet other people. There's a constant flow. When you have less than that number of courts, you just are not drawing people in. All over the peninsula, there are fixed courts. So even so, in Los Altos, we will have temporary courts. Um, I think that there's enough demand in our city. We know so many Los Altans want to play this sport. I've seen 20 somethings come and fill up the courts on Saturday afternoons. It really appeals to all ages and the trial will not be conclusive unless it's a true trial. And for that, we're going to need 10 pickleball courts on Rosita and six at McKenzie. Thank you. there are no commissioner questions, uh, the next person I have is Dan. I'm going to allow Dan to talk now. Okay, can you hear me? We can hear you. Give me one second and I will start your timer. Uh, Dan, you can begin. Okay, great. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between pickleball and some other sports. Um, I've lived in Los Altos for 30 years. For 45 years, I played racquetball. 10 years of that, I also concurrently played squash and handball. Um, when, I went to, when I came to pickleball about two years ago, it's very unique. In racquetball, I played maybe a thousand different guys over the years. I only played three women because it's very slanted towards speed and strength. When I came to pickleball, half the participants are women. And I play, and so mixed doubles is very common. It's kind of the, the, the most commonest way to play pickleball. It's been a lot of fun, changes the atmosphere completely. I've also played with kids as young as 10 years old. I played with people as old as 80. And the 80 year olds, even though I was an athlete who had played for 45 years of racquetball, the 80 year olds could beat me based on skill and knowledge of the game. So it's not as easy as it seems. It does go across ages. Um, there was the one commissioner who talked about double knee replacement. I, for two months, drilled with a lady recently who was a former tournament player. She had double knees replacement. She was coming back from that, and I helped her recondition, get back into the sport, and she's playing again now four days a week. I currently play seven days a week. 
I play four to five hours each day. Um, I do have some knee injuries left over from racquetball, but this allows me to transition to, to another sport that's really active, really fun. I get to play across age groups. I played doubles this week with a grandfather and his grandson. The grandson was 20 years old. So you do see mixes like that. You see parents playing with their kids and their kids just doing great until they have to go away to college and then they come back and play when they visit us again. So it's, it's really been a lot of fun mixing with the different people. There were some comments also about parking. I wanted to mention that I bike six miles to get to the Palo Alto pickleball courts. I know at least a half dozen other Los Altos residents that do that. So don't forget, if you build courts closer to where we live, there'll be more people taking bikes to the courts than there were in Palo Alto. Um, it's, a, it's a great sport. I really enjoyed a lot of your comments. You, you had a lot of good questions. Uh, one of them was about priorities of how do you balance between like tennis and pickleball. Uh, what we really need is set hours where one sport gets priority over the others. And then you allow a certain grace period, like 15 minutes for, the, for a sport to remove themselves from the court if they don't have priority during that time. But you don't have one sport always have priority over the other because you'll never get that sport that doesn't have priority to build the, the community. I have to know that if I go to a court, during these hours, I'll be able to play pickleball and any tennis player just can't show up and bump me off. So that's some of the signage we talked about, some of the processes that Jamie has talked about. And it looks like I'm out of time. Thank you, Dan. Uh, the next person that I have who would like to speak is Diane Edmund. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Vice Casey, Chair Morris, hang on a second. It looks like Vice Chair Morris has yep. a, a question for Dan. Okay. I will unmute him. Go right ahead. Thank you. So, um, Dan, thank you for your um, input. And I, I'm wondering, do you play any of those other sports anymore? And if not, um, why did you switch to solely pick a pickleball? I still play pack, uh, racquetball a couple times a month. I used to play five days a week of racquetball. <laughs> I tend to get enthused about a sport and I play it a lot. Um, there's a couple of reasons I moved away from it. One is the atmosphere of pickleball is far different. You're closer to other people. It's not as loud as racquetballers are active. So there's time to talk and you meet people across all different age groups with different interest areas. And I've, in the space of two years, I've probably met a couple of hundred people I know their backgrounds, I know where they're from, I know, you know, I know their family histories. That generally wasn't true in racquetball. You set up meetings, you meet for like an hour and a half over lunchtime, you, you play hard, and then you leave. There were a few, I did form really good friendships in racquetball with maybe 15 to 20 guys, not 200 in two years. <laughs> um, so that's a lot of it is the, the kind of interactions that occur are just different. Also, as a uh, Commissioner Yeh mentioned on the way down or the way up in different sports. Um, because I played racquetball for 45 years, I'm definitely on the downslope there. It's a sport geared towards speed and power. And I'm 66 years old now. So I can have someone less experienced come in and beat me. Uh, although they have to be pretty good at this point. I can still beat my kids if they try to play and stuff. Um, but in pickleball, I'm still on the learning side of it. And um, there's a lot to learn in pickleball. I can play people that are less experienced with me and still get a good workout and still work on my game by practicing the soft control shots, for instance. Most other sports, you can't do that. The first day I played pickleball, I played for three hours and didn't miss a serve. You can't do that in tennis. It takes a while to learn the skill just to get the ball and play in tennis. Um, so it's immediately accessible and yet it's got a lot of finesse, a lot of uh, strategy. There's pro pickleball players. The top pro men's player is 21. The top woman is, I think, 15 years old. So um, there, there is a youth movement among pickleball players. Um, but, but that's why I've, I've pretty much switched over to pickleball. Even if given the chance to go back to racquetball three to five days a week, I wouldn't do it. I'd go back to pickleball. My knees can't take that much racquetball anymore. Um, but I'm fine for pickleball okay. and I can play five, six hours a day. All right. Thank you so much. Sure. Okay. 
Our next speaker is Diane Edmonds, and I'm going to allow her to talk. Diane, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Give me one second and I will begin your timer. Okay. You may begin. All right. Hello. My name is Diane Edmonds. I would like to start by thanking all of you for volunteering your time and passion for community service. I would also like to express immense gratitude to Donna Leggy and Jamie Chu and the Parks and Recreation teams for hearing our request and bringing this matter to your attention. I have lived in Los Altos for over 20 years. I raised my children here in the public schools and I used to own a local business, Linden Tree Children's Books on State Street for 10 years. I mention this fact because nothing represented community more than owning an icon in our downtown. I sold Linden Tree in 2019 and that is when I discovered pickleball and the pickleball community. We are here today to express the need for public outdoor courts in Los Altos. My home courts are Palo Alto. That is where I had to go to take lessons and to learn about the sport. I'm a member of the Palo Alto Pickleball Club but I was on wait list for over a year because priority is given to Palo Alto residents. I am now speaking on behalf of the 75 members of the Palo Alto Pickleball Club that are Los Altos residents. And this number only tells half the story. Palo Alto Pickleball Club has over 700 members on their roster. There are members from the club that are on Los Altos Hills that I do not know that number. And there are many from our city that are playing regularly in Palo Alto and other municipalities that are not members of any club affiliation. I personally play in Sunnyvale, Santa Clara, Palo Alto, and Menlo Park. Los Altos has a vibrant pickleball community despite being the only city on the peninsula without public outdoor courts. When I run into Los Altos residents at these facilities, the sentiment is the same. Given the demographic and community focus of our town, why do we have to leave our town to play pickleball? In reviewing the recommendation from staff, please take into consideration that critical mass is a core factor in successful pickleball atmosphere. It is the norm rather than the exception for individuals to come together and play casual pickup games and stay for hours. The staff has researched the best practices in a phased approach, but their recommendation does stop short of allowing a vibrant gathering for frequent players. We are urging you to advise the staff that six to 10 courts, which is very doable, is what is needed to ensure success for pickleball, for the parks and recreation, and most importantly, for the city of Los Altos. And we would love to have a working session with all of you to introduce you to pickleball. Uh, Vice Chair Morris, is your hand still raised or? Okay. So I, do you want me to lower it? Okay. Uh, are there any questions for this speaker? I'm so sorry. Uh, I was thinking about a question that I was going to ask for something else, but yes, I have a question for the speaker, if, if that's all right. Um, she, uh, Diane mentioned about uh, being a member as did somebody else of the Palo Alto Pickleball Club. I was curious what the fees are, and then I was curious what they get for it. And then my last curiosity about that, because I maybe I, I should know this, but I don't, is is it an outdoor um, set up or is it indoors? Oh, absolutely. So the fees for the Palo Alto Pickleball Club is $50 a year. Okay. What that gets you is a social demographic to, to communicate with. You get a listing of other players, their rankings, you get invited to, you get first options to um, fun tournaments. There was a turkey waddle, pa a turkey paddle waddle right over Thanksgiving. And those types of activities are typically only offered to club members. That does not mean though that only club members can play on the Palo Alto courts. It's actually the opposite. There's more 
open play by people that are doing drop-in without any club affiliation. The club is just the social piece around the pickleball contingent. Um, I'm sorry, what were your other questions? Um, boy, now I, I had uh, what it cost, what you get for, oh, is it indoor or outdoor? Oh, it's all outdoor. It's all outdoor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Ye. Yeah, um, uh, th thanks again for, for your, um, your comment. I just had a quick question. I, I, I keep hearing that um, it would be preferable to have many locations at one place or many courts at one place. Is that the case? Because yeah, you guys, uh, um, you may not have this experience, but as we move along in this process, we're going to get the, the group of our citizenry on the other side of this issue coming out. So would you prefer having fewer total locations, but if you do have a location, having a bunch of courts at that location, would that be preferable than having just a bunch of random courts all over the city? Our preference would definitely be to have a greater number of courts in a single site rather than a distributed model across multiple sites. And the reason why is this critical mass factor that we keep talking about, people come and go, rotate in, rotate out. <laughs> one, one thing to remember is that an, a pickleball game, an average game only takes like 12 to 20 minutes. I mean, 20 minutes is a long game. So when you're turning over players that frequently of wanting to rotate in and out, you need the space to be able to accommodate that, that number of people. One or two courts, as many other cities will be able, uh, have tried out, is a disaster because then it becomes um, uh, like the wild, wild west because people will come and claim a court and then never leave. And they know that if there's only one court, they could bring a group of say six people and just take over the court and not yield to incoming players. So by having more courts in a single site will definitely allow the flexibility to accommodate all levels of play, um, beginners through advanced. Uh, novices are not going to be intimidated by courts being uh, commanded by advanced players and the social at atmosphere to be able to um, uh, have, have congenial conversations around who wants to play the next game with you know, Tom and Joe or who, who wants to be up next. Um, and that only comes about with the, uh, the, the larger number of courts on a single site. Okay, perfect, thank you. All right, uh, Commissioner Valadez. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Edmonds. A um, couple of questions. Um, I personally have not been to Mitchell Park. Uh, are they all dedicated pickleball courts there? No, the P Mitchell Park setup is, is very interesting and that's why we would love to have you all come out for a working session there. It is, there are some um, dedicated permanent pickleball courts then there are some shared courts in which pickleball has priority hours, and then there are some dedicated tennis courts. So the tennis players do have priorities during certain hours of the day, but there are always some, but there are some permanent pickleball courts at there as well. And then you have the shared courts in the interim. Okay, specifically for the ones that are um, that are overlaid with multiple stripes. In your experience, assuming you you or a close friend have played on those courts, have you found it to be distracting in any way to the game to deal with multiple stripes? I assume they're multiple colors on a given court. Uh, it is distracting. Um, at Mitchell, the line, the tennis court lines are white, and the pickleball courts are lines are blue. Um, at in Menlo Park, they have uh, set up some new courts and they actually did it opposite. So I, how can I describe this? The, the tennis courts are laid out one way and the pickleball are the opposite. So it's like this mind configuration of trying to figure out what lines are you truly working with. The US Pickleball Association is coming out with recommendations to even go with things like orange lines or fluorescent yellow lines to be able to clearly distinguish what lines are for the uh, multi-use courts. Thank you very much. Uh, Vice Chair Morris, do you have another question? I do. Um, 
I was wondering, Diane, uh, about how many people are at the courts at one time when you're there? Oh, it's, it can be quite a bit. Um, in the, the, the prime times for pickleball are typically in the morning, say from eight to 10. And um, let's see, there's, there's uh, like 14, maybe 16 courts that are all full with people uh, looking to rotate in. Um, and, uh, and then the next prime time that, that things start picking up again is like usually like around four in the afternoon until the evening. And weekends are definitely the, um, you know, a very, I don't play, I actually don't play on weekends because it just gets too crowded at Mitchell. I could go to other places, but particularly at Mitchell, it's just way too crowded. Okay, thank you. And then one more um, question for you. So I'm hearing very clearly from this um, resident speaking this evening about the need for more courts in one location as opposed to a number of them spread out. Um, I'm curious, would a single court or two courts be of any help um, to people who are learning the sport? Would that be a, a nice thing for them to be able to have? Like I would, I'm thinking if I were to take up this sport at some point, I actually don't want to, you know, be around a bunch of people as I flounder and fail. And so, but other people may not be feeling that way, but do you think there is some benefit to a single court or a double court um, situation? Or is it just um, useless? Do you just say, forget it, we don't want it? I think unless you were to designate a single court site as only for novices and have it properly monitored and controlled and set it up so that this really is just a novice court and only novices should uh, be participating and that's where all the lessons are at or something like that. Um, that's the only benefit I could see. But let me just also explain that um, over at Mitchell, because of the sheer number of people, um, the club, the through the Palo Alto Pickleball Club, which just is, like I said, the social piece of it, but they have worked out a program with the city for called Novices Unite, and, and this club itself hosts beginning uh, sessions and have uh, people out there every morning in, you know, the fluorescent yellow vest, like a construction worker, and it's clearly noted on the club website of just find one of those people and they will get you going, they'll get you with the right people. And that's what I'm saying, like with the critical mass factor, uh, you know, Palo Alto realized they needed to put in that sort of level of infrastructure to be able to accommodate people because um, it is a friendly sport and they certainly don't want people to be intimidated and uh, beginning session, sessions classes are being offered, you know, two and three times a week just through the people volunteering their time through the club. So, um, Commissioner or Vice Chair Morris, particularly if you wanted to come and learn the sport, um, I would actually promote the idea of wanting to be on a bigger site so that as you start progressing, you would then have other people that you could then find and, 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 and identify with and say, hey, let's meet up on Saturday at three or whatever. Um, a single site will not allow that. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you, by the way, for all your years at Linden Tree Books. It's a oh. favorite spot for me. Thank you. Uh, it's still in business, which is great to Oh say. yeah, I still go, I still <laughs> go. <laughs> Thanks. Commissioner Corrigan, and Ms. Edmonds, thank you uh, for your, all your comments and feedback. I, I have a quick question. I, I was familiar with, like with tennis, you typically reserve a court for singles for an hour and doubles for an hour and a half. What, what's the standard, how does it work with pickleball in terms of time slots that you would kind of reserve? Well, um, most of the, the only city around here that has a court reservation system is Sunnyvale. And you can reserve for, um, at, once again, Sunnyvale residents get priority. And uh, you can reserve one hour blocks of time um, up to three hours. Um, the, the difficulty with a situation like that is that you have to... May I clarify? I guess you're right about reserve. I meant in terms of in a first, cur first come, first serve model. Oh, okay, how sure. Long, how long do you get to use the... 
Um, well, the, the system within in pickleball um, is typically what's called the paddle down. If you come to some courts and uh, all the courts are filled and you have um, like one friend or four people that you've come with, there's four of you, you then just find a court that you would like to um, play on and you just put your paddles down. And when the players on that court are done, then they either concede the court to whoever's put the paddles down or you work out amongst yourselves of two people rotate on, like the winners stay on and two people rotate on, then all of a sudden you now have a great rotation going on between new groups of people. Um, it's, it's very much about, and this, that's sort of the norm. In fact, it's the universal norm within pickleball is called the paddle down. You just put your paddles down and wait for the opportunity to rotate in. Um, very few, um, I have never had anybody not give up a court just because, uh, you know, we put paddles down. It's, it's recognized as that's the norm. Now, a few other cities have put in um, mechanisms of where you can, uh, newcomers come in and can line their paddles up like on a rack. And so when a court becomes available, whoever's next on the rack can just go and take the court. Um, and that seems to work. It's really the, the personality of the courts that, that dictate how, um, what, what, what uh, priority mechanism is being used. But it, it said like it maybe a 20 minute maximum would be how long a session would be according, I think, Dan. But I'll leave it at that. Th thanks for, thank you. Commissioner Valadez. I'm sorry, I meant to lower my hand. That's my bad. I'm done with questions. Okay. Um, do we have another resident who wants to? Yes, go ahead. We do. We have two more. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we have Scott Spielman next. I'm going to allow him to talk. Well, Scott, are you, are yes. you there? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Okay. Um, I can put your two minutes up. Oh, I. Do I have two or three? Oh, I'm sorry. I can put your three minutes up. I will do that right, right now. Welcome uh, back. Commission, you are, you commissioners, you're doing a great job. And Jamie, once again, just an excellent job. Thank you for taking on this issue. I think it's an important issue. And I do think that pickleball is growing by leaps and bounds. Los Altos faces the same challenge with pickleball courts that it faces with everything else a shortage of space, a shortage of courts. And I think therefore it needs to decide what to do very carefully and judiciously. I think Los Altos only has 10 uh, tennis courts that are part of its park system. I think those are at uh, Mary Mead, McKinsey, Rosita and Montclara, if I'm not mistaken. So with limited tennis courts already, uh, uh, then you run, a, run up against the challenge of cannibalizing tennis uh, for the good of pickleball. So whatever gets decided, and I believe that pickleball should, should have courts, it needs to be done carefully. And, and I think it should be done with maybe using two tennis courts in one location to afford, to afford four pickleball courts. If you were to put 10 to, uh, pickleball courts in at Rosita, you basically have cannibalized uh, tennis at Rosita, which is uh, about a third of the tennis courts in the city. So I think it should be phased in. I think you could start with two tennis courts and then move from there. I think it's important that, that you take into consideration the distraction that pickleball causes for tennis players because the noise is really an element and also, the color and quality of the lines can be very difficult for tennis players. If they are orange and yellow, they become much more difficult for tennis players playing on those same courts. And the other thing to note is that pickleball players could tend to play there for hours and hours and then dominate or monopolize tennis courts. So whatever you decide to do, please phase it in and think it through carefully and hear from other tennis players. But I think you're on the right track. I've noticed it in some areas like in Sunnyvale, they separated the pickleball courts and dedicated four courts to uh, pickleball only. 
and they're only used a couple of hours in the morning. It seems like they're not used all day, but they have taken two of the tennis courts and dedicated them there. So more work to be done, but I think you're really on the right track to figure out how to accommodate this growing sport. So thanks commission and thanks uh, Jamie and uh, also resident comments. Awesome, awesome work tonight. Thank you very much. Vice Chair Morris, you have a question for Mr. Spielen? Yes, I do. I realize, so these racket things aren't my thing. I'm more of a <laughs> different kind of sports person. But um, my question is, and, and I think uh, Mr. Spielman would know quite well, how long is the average tennis game? Well, I think someone's expressed it well. If you're playing singles, it's probably less. I'd say an hour, an hour and a half, doubles, maybe two hours. Uh, okay. I don't think they go much beyond that. Okay, thanks. <coughs> Commissioner Valadez. Hello, Mr. Spielman. Um, thank you for your comment. A real quick question. Do you, have you played pickleball? Do you have experience on the courts? I do. Excellent. Um, would you, do you play in Palo Alto or Sunnyvale or? Uh, I played locally and I've also played in Palm Springs uh, and Palm Desert. Um, and so I do see it as a, as a very growing entity. So for sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Vice Chair Morris, you have another question? All right, uh, so we have another resident, Casey, who's lined up ready to, to comment. We do have one last resident, um, John Bayer. Um, I'm going to allow John to talk. Thank you. I'm going to reinforce a number of the points that have been made by other residents who've spoken about pickleball. Um, first, a couple of data points here. Pickleball was taught to our kids 10 years ago at Egan. Um, we play with our 20 plus year old kids when they are in town. Um, and pickleball is a very inclusive game. I mean, you play, four people typically play a game. And, you know, if you're husband and wife, um, it may be two of you, you got to find two other players. Um, and it's a sport where beginners learn by playing with other players. And that's how my, both my wife and I learned. Uh, we've taken lessons since, but um, it's, in my opinion, far less competitive in terms of play than perhaps some of the other racket sports. Um, if you go to Palo Alto, and we play both in Mitchell Park and in Mountain View at the Mountain View Senior Center, particularly at Mitchell Park, you will see 20 and 30 year olds playing, um, you will see seniors playing. So um, this is really a sport that's been taking on by all ages. I would, in, I would agree with the comment by Ed, Diane Edmonds and others that more courts together makes better sense. Um, people play a game, they rotate through uh, and they play with other people and having a single court makes it just more challenging. Um, when we play in Mountain View, um, there is a club there. We're not members of the club, but we go by club rules. When there are, the club is there, it is a paddles down approach uh, and it works out brilliantly. And it doesn't matter if you're a club member or if you're just uh, showing up to play a game, you put your paddle down. There are three courts right in immediate vicinity and the next court comes available and the first four paddles get to play. Um, um, I will tell you that single use courts are more challenging, particularly for paddle ball players because typically the tennis uh, lines are in white and paddle lines are in blue. And when you're old like me, seeing the blue lines can be difficult, particularly when it's shady. The other comment that I'll make is that when you have courts that faced east-west, it really gets tough when the sun is bright and you're looking right into the sun. 
So uh, just a logistics issue, the courts that face north-south are much more preferable than east-west. Um, those are my comments. I really appreciate um, your trying to add pickleball courts to Los Altos. Uh, we meet lots of players who play um, uh, and live in Los Altos, but play in Mitchell Park or play uh, in Mountain View. Thank you. Okay. I don't see any hands raised for questions from Mr. Bear. Um, do we have any other members of any other uh, residents or members of the public who want to make comments, Casey? Um, no, Chair Daly. I, I do have one previous speaker who had a hand raised, but I just wanted to note that we do not allow members of the public to speak twice unless there are clarifying questions, um, unless you'd like to make an exception. No, we don't need to make an exception, but okay. if, that, if that resident or a member of the public has anything else they want to add, they're free to email the commission. Of course. Um, so no, I have no other speakers with their hands raised. That is the end of public comment. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll uh, provide staff some, some feedback um, and I'll go ahead and, and uh, get the pickleball rolling. Um, I don't think you should be implementing this all over town. I think you ought to look at Rosita, which has the, the largest amount of available real estate. And I think you ought to increase the number of pickleball courts at Rosita and create a dense, uh, you know, central location that will attract more players and will exploit the social aspects of the game. And, um, I also think that doing it all over town in onesie twosies is going to create an operational nightmare for staff that uh, you can easily avoid by concentrating the efforts at one location. And if it's a success, then you can expand down, down, the, uh, down the road. That's my input. Uh, I would look for other commissioners to raise their hands and offer their comments as well, please. Vice Chair Morris. Okay, um, I actually have a couple more questions. Um, but it, before I go on with this, I'm wondering, does anybody know typically what the cost of the rackets are and the balls are for people to get started in this? There's a reason I'm asking it. I mean, most residents can afford it, but I'm just wondering, is there, does anybody have any idea? Yeah. Could you tell us? I mean, you can spend big money or you can get into this, you know, you can go to Dick's Sporting Goods and get a couple of, you know, in, in, and spend like 20 bucks. Okay. Um, and is it typical, do you know, uh, Chair Daly, for people to bring their own balls and rackets? There isn't like a bucket or a box or something people that people bring their own into. balls and rackets. It's like Always. any other racket sport in that regard. Okay. Um, and I'm, so I'm wondering, and I would encourage that there be a consideration of if we have a single court somewhere or um, do end up with something at Hillview, which I hope we do end up with at least one court at Hillview, uh, that there be a system for people to be able to check out racket and ball. Um, because there will be people who can't afford it that come to our city, and I think it would be a nice amenity that we could provide. There may be people visiting who didn't bring their own racket and ball as well, and so it would be nice if we provided something like that. Um, then my other question is, if we had a large uh, space, like let's say Rosita, because that was thrown out uh, by some of the callers, if we took Rosita and put a number of um, courts in there, um, would, can the staff handle doing a similar sort of experience as the Palo Alto Club? Could we create a system where there is a fee to use the courts, where um, there is a, a system where, you know, you can share the information with the other um, uh, pickleball players? Is that something that's been considered by staff at all? A great question. Um... Uh, Vice Chair Morris, and yes, we are considering um, all program um, elements um, that would make, uh, hopefully make a successful program. And that okay. would be one. 
Okay, great. And I think after hearing, so then my, my comments um, align quite a bit with Chair Daly um, in that, and, and some of the speakers is that I think it would be better from what I'm hearing that we have more courts in one location. The, here's the trick. We are a small city with small parks. And so the parking becomes an issue. And when I looked at Mary Mead, I thought, there's no way we can handle the way the pickleball games um, rotate in at Mary Mead. That parking lot is almost always full. We have on the weekends in particular, we have people parking along the street across from Mary Mead now um, because there's a regular volleyball uh, game there every single weekend. And so we're now getting the parking on the street is being used as well, which I think is a bit of a hazard um, for people crossing the street. Um, so I, I personally don't think Mary Mead is an option. I think if McKinsey is going to be used, it needs to, the parking will need to be monitored because a lot of the parking is used by people who work in that area. They don't actually, the, the cars aren't there um, because they're going to the park. They park there and they go to their job in the, um, the, do the doctor um, park area. They call it the medical park area. So I would, if my input is take Mary Mead off of the list uh, 100%. Um, Montclair, I, I, I don't see a problem with Montclair because there's a lot of street parking right there along it, but I, I understand that as a resident, I wouldn't necessarily want all of the cars parked by my house. So um, again, we have all of our parks are neighborhood parks. They're considered small parks. When I look at the size of say Mitchell Park, that's 21 acres, I think, 21, 24 acres, something like that. We don't have a park like that in our city. All of our parks are very small. Um, we don't have the parking in our city. And the big thing is that idea of if you build it, they will come. So we have to think about the impact on the neighbors as well. And I think Rosita, again, it has a larger parking lot. And so if it would work to handle that amount of traffic along with the traffic that goes with the games that are, are on the field, then I think that might be one of our better um, places to go. And I'll reiterate, I think it belongs at Hillview as well because we have the parking there. Um, and maybe something needs to change at Hillview in order to be able to accommodate the pickleball, but I know council approved the pickleball there as well. Um, then as far as, uh, so I think Rosita, Again, might you might need more. McKinsey, I think, would be okay with a couple, but there's going to be parking issues at McKinsey for sure. I wouldn't even consider Mary Mead as a phase one. Um, so I think those are my main points. Thank you. Commissioner Valadez. Thank you, Chair Daly. <clears throat> my surmisal of all the all the input I've heard is um, and my uh, fledgling experience with the sport personally but with a large community that I belong to that is crazy for pickleball um, I'm very much in favor of focusing a phased approach and when I say phased I don't mean start small and get big I mean let's really test with lines that um, we can create a community around a suitable park and to me that is just obviously Rosita. We should put 10 courts at Rosita. We should, whatever money we were gonna to take to, to stripe else other parks uh, or in any way modify them with signage or whatever, we should take that money and make um, some of the required poles that currently exist removable so that we can have maximal courts. Um, if possible, make them east-west oriented um, if we can. Uh, it has parking, uh, it has space, there's a uh, distance between the activity and uh, the residential area. Although I, I believe that neighborhood parks, you know, you, you bought a house near a neighborhood park, you're going to deal with the sounds of kids and the sounds of adults and the sounds of community. And um, I think that that's just part of the, part of the package. Um, but I do understand that Rosita may provide a more ideal situation 
Um, as far as uh, Mary Mead, I don't think Montclair is worth it because it just doesn't give you anything uh, in terms of density. Um, Mary Mead and McKenzie, they both have perhaps parking issues, but I think this community is very much about walking and cycling. And if they see that there are no parking, you know, and they have to park far away because they have to walk to the court because there's no parking, they're probably just going to get on their bike or walk in anyways, or they're going to carpool. So I'm not as worried as Commissioner Morris on parking, but I do understand that Rosita is, is more ideal in that regard. Um, the last comment has to do with contrasting lines. I mean, I've always played sports my entire life and almost in all cases, whether indoors or outdoors, courts were shared amongst multiple activities, whether it was volleyball with tennis, whether it was, you know, um, indoor soccer with basketball, with indoor tennis. I mean, I, with the proper lining, which we can always ask us for experts, uh, what is suitable, what is best for people that say are colorblind or whatever, or given the lighting limitations, um, we can come up with um, both striping and area area painting to distinguish courts. Um, I would, I would, if I were a pickleball player, um, I would want more pickleball courts. So I think if the city only does one site and does a lot of courts, that would be, I think, more pleasing to the pickleball community and more manageable for the city and allow us to um, really have a controlled um, experiment that we can monitor very closely for all the factors that people have raised that we need to understand. It just, it creates a much more um, controllable laboratory environment. So I'm very much in favor of that. Thank you. Commissioner Corrigan. Yes, I actually, I agree with every, everyone else's opinion on this. I think a single location makes sense based on the feedback from the community about how the experience works. Um, and I also, I, I, I defer to the city to choose the location, but Rosita does make sense. Uh, one thing that I found interesting was uh, Mr. Spielman's comment about tennis player interaction with pickleball players and the noise factor. And I can tell you have big, having played tennis many years, tennis is a lot like golf. You know, you really, noise is sort of a factor when you're playing tennis. So that implies to me that there has to be reserved hours for those, those sports can't really coexist well during the same time of day. Maybe it's, and yet I assume that tennis and pickleball probably have the same times of day that people want to play. They don't want to play really hot in the middle of the day, right? So that implies to me maybe alternating days or something, you know, uh, alternating morning hours, something to make sure each audience gets its time. Um, those are my two main items, uh, but uh, I, I, I do see that, and, and I do agree that um, with Commissioner Valdez, you should be able to play through the lining situation. But I will tell you again, that's not, you know, the, the tennis ball is hitting the line. You have to be really, it's hard to play tennis. You have to, you have to, you have to watch those lines closely. So it can get, it is distracting, but you know, it's a community uh, effort. So that's what I have to say. Vice Chair Morris. So Commissioner Ye hasn't spoken yet. I wasn't sure if he had anything to say or. Well, I, I, I didn't see okay. his hand up and I saw your hand up. Okay, I, thanks. So, um, I just am, again, I want to say, I looking at this, I'm not in favor of 10 courts at Rosita. I, I do want to go back on that a little bit and just make sure I'm clear. I think that's too many for the location. Um, I don't know if it's the six or the four, but if you have 10 courts and you have, you know, two to four people, you're going to have 20 to 40 people um, using those courts. And that's the amount of cars, or if they ride their bike, you might have half riding their bike, which I highly doubt, but you're, you're, you have to consider this parking um, situation. And um, 
what I think would be a disservice to our city is to put the courts in and then not have a way for people to access them. And so we end up with empty courts. Um, that would be a concern of mine. So I'm leaning more towards the four or six number um, as a starting point, as like a phase one kind of thing to see how that goes. Um, the other thing I did want to say, because I didn't make this clear, is I am in favor of this. I know lots of people who play it. It's very popular. I'm not sure. It's been going since 1965, so growing um, over the years. And I'm not sure how, if it's going to be sort of a phase, you know, like it's, it's all the rage, like pet rocks were for a while, or if it's going to actually stick around um, and have longevity to it. So I like the idea of taking... Um, a more conservative approach as we get started um, with trying it at maybe one park and seeing how that goes. Um, I, I know Commissioner Ye hasn't hasn't weighed in yet. I still don't see his hand up, but I'm going to go oh, ahead. And go yeah, ahead. if you want, I, I'll I'll do it. I just, okay, yeah. go ahead, Commissioner. There you Yeh, go. Please. I raise my hand. <clears throat> uh, yeah, you know, it's it's. I'm hearing kind of like the. Um, same, same type of conversations we had with the dog park, except the participants here mainly play pickleball, so they're kind of on the other side of the uh, argument. Um, it's, yeah, the, I think Rosita is fine. I mean, I, I, hear, I hear what Chair, uh, Vice Chair Morris is saying about parking, but you know what? You're going to go exercise. If you have to park farther away, just picture it as part of your exercise and, and walk. Um, it's, yeah, if we do it on every court, it doesn't work, that's not great. No matter what, you try to remove those lines, the paint's not going to be the same, the sanding's not going to be the same, you're still going to see them. So, um, yeah, I think Rosie is fine. We'll put the max amount, see what happens. Um, if there's a community over there, there's water, there's, there's, <coughs> there's plenty of parking. That noise won't annoy everybody because it's kind of not near a lot of things. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't play the game. I've seen it. It looks like people enjoy it. So why not? I don't, you know, same thing with the dogs. If, if you have a dog, why do you have to leave Los Altos to have your dog play off leash? So, you know, if you live in Los Altos, why do you have to leave the city to go play pickleball? Let's put a, pick a place and see what happens. So um, I'm going to make some comments about parking. There are close to 100 parking places at Rosita. 100. And there are three tennis courts which could potentially under a 10 court scenario you know uh, attract 40 people uh, meanwhile for baseball tournaments that are played there or soccer games soccer tournaments that happen there you, you you might have you know literally people in the hundreds showing up so that's it's, it's actually, you know, parking is a, is a non-issue at Rosita. Um, I will also make a comment about parking at Montclair. And while I don't favor doing this at Montclair, parking is not the reason why. Uh, St. Joseph, the street that those courts are on, accommodates all of the parking for all of the soccer games and baseball games that occur there. And so again, the, the number of participants in this particular sport is, um, modest compared to the numbers that are already accommodated at those facilities. The problem with Montclair is that you, you simply don't have enough space to, to have the, the critical mass of pickleball courts that, are, that, 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 that we were talking about. Uh, and the other problem, which is not trivial, is that those courts don't belong to the city of Los Altos. That's a joint use agreement with the Cupertino Unified School District. And, um, you know, that's another layer that we would have to navigate in order to do anything with those courts. And so I think our efforts are better spent, um, you know, achieving critical mass at Rosita. And that's what I have to say about parking. Um, are there any other commissioner comments that, that uh, that, that we need to get for staff. Vice Chair Morris. It's not really a comment so much as I'm curious how, um, how this sounds to staff. If the idea of doing it just at Rosita was looked at and how staff feels that would work. 
Great question, Vice Chair Morris. And um, in our conversations, there were many facets of the discussion. And um, as we've um, shared in the presentation and through many of the comments that we've heard tonight, um, uh, you know, just making sure that we put forward a positive experience, not only for tennis, but for pickleball. So that was um, a, many of the ideas that the commissioners have shared were a part of those um, initial discussions. Um, and uh, ultimately, um, we landed on what our recommendation was in um, the presentation. But I think in part of the reason why we wanted to come to the um, the Senior Commission and the Parks and Rec Commission is to get feedback. Um, we've been talking with uh, community members, we've been talking with um, members that used our indoor program, and ultimately we want to get uh, feedback so what we move forward with um, makes sense. And so we will take all of this, um, uh, all these comments that we've received, not only from the commissioners, but from the public as well, and absolutely take that into consideration um, as we prepare. Because again, we, we want both indoor and outdoor opportunities um, for the pickleball community. Okay, and I'm, so because you looked at all of these things, is there a reason why the idea for having numerous courts at Rosita might have been tossed out the window as an option or that you came up with this option instead? Are you able to share that with us? No, absolutely. So when we looked at the, um, the number, what we wanted to do again, um, as I mentioned in the presentation, is to, um, to provide, initially, we wanted to provide um, opportunities throughout Los Altos. That was one of the initial factors that we wanted to look at. Um, parking was uh, definitely um, a high consideration for us. And ultimately what we decided um, for the number is um, looking at how that might outline. We wanted to uh, leave the tennis nets in place, but we also wanted to make sure that there was spacing as um, has come up um, in some of the comments, um, the way that uh, some of the courts may lay out. Um, that's initially why staff wanted to um, provide space. So if there were, um, let's say, pickleball and tennis going at the same time, that we would have some space in between um, if everything was being used at that time. So that's, um, uh, again, we were trying to find, as I said earlier, middle ground to kind of start. But again, this was what um, staff is putting forward, what we, what we thought made sense, obviously wanting to get some additional feedback for consideration. So we're appreciative of everything that not only the commissioners have provided us, but obviously comments from the public as well. Chair Daly, you're muted. Pete, you're muted. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for that great discussion. Uh, staff, thank you for the presentation and for moving on this issue. I think it's, uh, I think it's something that's going to really represent an improvement in, in many residents' daily lives. Last thing I'll also add, by the way, about Rosita's tennis courts, and I'm a tennis player. I've been playing tennis for my whole life. Um, Rosita's tennis courts are the least used tennis courts of all of the tennis courts in town. And I spent a lot of time at Rosita over, over the years coaching baseball. And I've always thought it was odd that those tennis courts aren't occupied. Meanwhile, I live next to near or I, near Marymead and those tennis courts are always, always busy. So, um, I guess it looks like uh, Vice Chair Morris, you have one more thing you want to add? <coughs> one more thing. That was one of the things I was uh, trying to get at at the beginning. And my questions is, I think it's important to understand how these courts are used. And if there are some that aren't used much, those would be the ones we need to be looking at for the tennis. And then maybe because tennis is a quieter sport, maybe keeping, you know, some of those courts just 
for tennis is, is super important that we don't mix it all up because with pickleball, it sounds like it's just constantly coming and going of people if it's at its peak use. And that would be highly distracting for someone that was paying, playing tennis. So I think when you're looking at it, I would love it if staff would go out to the tennis <coughs> over the next month to three month period. The holidays aren't the best time to assess this, but to figure out a, how, a length of time to make an assessment of how the tennis courts are used, how many people are there at different times of the day, um, or assign, you know, some of the commissioners to do that because we're really good at that kind of a thing. <laughs> it would, but I think it's important to understand this and have, be sort of scientific about it as opposed to do that emotional, like this is where we're going to put it. I, I think it would work better the other way. So thank you. I, um, I will say that we uh, as staff uh, appreciate that, um, uh, that and we very may well take you up on that. So we um, we appreciate that. And I just want to say uh, thank you for all of the, the comments and ideas. It is very helpful for staff. Commissioner Valadez? Um, yeah, I, I just really encourage whatever, whatever staff uh, does with this feedback. Well, first a process question to Chair Daly. Are we going to create kind of a, some kind of a, I don't know, itemized list of feedback for, for staff or is staff expected to take all of the individual inputs and figure out what to do? Uh, no, we're not gonna do anything like create anything for staff. They can, they can review the, the recording if, if they're so inclined, if their notes are, are insufficient. Um, they, I mean, they're handling this as an operational issue. We're not even going to be making a recommendation. We're not voting on anything. So um, they were just collecting feedback and I'm pretty sure they probably are, um, you know, no, 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 I, I'm pretty sure they know how to do that. Um, I would also add, by the way, for other commissioners who may not be as familiar with the Rosita facility, there are no houses around those tennis courts. The closest house is sort of kitty corner across Rosita Avenue and around the corner on La Prenda. But the tennis courts themselves are adjacent to a 100 space parking lot and a preschool facility and a Covington School and the baseball and soccer field and Covington's baseball field. So, um, and the tennis courts also have a traditional tennis sound and wind barrier around the courts, which is a, a mesh net, you know, uh, along with the chain link fence. And then outside the mesh net, uh, there's an additional, you know, uh, probably three dozen or four dozen uh, shrubs or trees that are you know the same height as as the fence so there's already really good sound barriers at the rosita courts i didn't finish my comment actually um I i'm would, sorry i'm sorry it's all, right. it's all right what you said is good stuff i just didn't want you to move on. um the i would whatever whatever staff decides to do then i would really hope that it can be accomplished so that by the spring time we can use those pickleball pickleball courts uh, wherever they end up happening to be because you know spring is a great time to get a fresh start on the year. Um, so whatever studies we do, uh, I, I would volunteer to help observe courts and observe parking um, and observe usage in other sports as well as uh, Commissioner Morris. And I just hope that with spring we can we can have a big pickleball splash. That would be awesome. Thank you. Vice Chair Morris. Uh, thank you. So that's the other reason I like McKinsey is what Chair Daly was saying about that there aren't residents by it. So if there's a way to do it at McKinsey to add in one or two, I think that could be the second one. That gets you to the south. So you'd have the north side, the middle of the city, and the south end of the city um, covered. And again, there's not houses around there. There are also the 
interesting part about McKinsey actually is that it is um, there wouldn't be a high impact on residents with if there were a lot of traffic coming in. Whereas Rosita does have residents and there, if you have a lot of cars going in and out, it will impact them. And I know that other commissioners have made the comment of if you live by a park, you're supposed to put up with noise and you, you know, big deal. You got to put, people live by parks. Every one of us move into our neighborhoods and move into our homes thinking they're kind of going to stay the same and they're, you're not going to have these major uh, changes. So if you suddenly have a park that is seeing an influx of, you know, let's say 40 people um, in clumps of time coming and going in their cars and you can't get out of your driveway or you're worried that your child is going to get hit if they step off of the yard space or something. I think it's something for me that is very important to think about for the residents that are nearby. Um, so I just wanted to put that input in. If there are any residents listening, um, I am not one of those people who thinks it's okay to just have this high impact on, on residents with, um, with the changes that we make to our parks. I think it's to be mindful of that. And I hope staff would be mindful of that as well. Because you know what, if we aren't, we're going to hear about it. <laughs> so thanks. Commissioner Corrigan. You know, just a brief rejoinder to, to Vice Chair Morris's comment. I, I agree with that because one thing that the, the, the issue about, you know, traffic spikes, my concern is it sounds like there's going to be a consolidated time of day between whatever, 8 and 11, there's going to be a ton of volume. So I don't think it's necessarily fair to compare it and say, oh, there's soccer events here. Well, that might happen a few days a week, but this is going to be seven days a week, certain time of day, a ton of people. So that I agree. I think we do. We are concerned about the impact on the neighborhoods. At least I am in terms of the traffic flow in some of these areas. But um, that doesn't obviate the need for pickleball. So, thanks. Uh, Vice Chair Morris, you have something else? Thanks. Sorry, I just realized when. Um... Commissioner Corrigan spoke that I hadn't said, I think that that rotation of the days of the week is probably a good thing to look at since our parks are sort of small and limited. So if, I don't know if you guys were looking into that or if staff is looking into that, but it, um, it does seem like that may end up being the one way to keep the peace as we try to do shared uh, courts. Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move on now. And we're going to take a quick five minute break. Uh, it's 857. Let's actually reconvene at 903, please.
Looks like people are trickling back in. And here we have the key player. Hi, Casey. I can't um, have my video on because someone disabled it. Oh, let me let me fix that. Hmm. Oh, I thought that was intentional. No. All right. So we're going to go ahead and reconvene. The next item on the agenda is informational items, um, information and announcements from staff. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm going to share really quick. Um, I, I just wanted to bring to your attention that we've changed the format of the agendas a little bit to line up with city council. So our informational items in the future will be usually documents or flyers for your information. And then our normal written out informational reports will be oral and be given during the next item, which is for your committees, um, subcommittees and um, individual commissioners and staff to provide oral reports. So um, you probably all had a chance to look at, at the, um, Oh, the flyers that we had included. I'm going to go ahead and share them really quick. Uh oh, it says there was an error. Uh oh. I guess um, I guess we're not going to share them. <clears throat> hmm. You can probably bring them up alongside the window if you'd like us to. So you can talk about them. Yeah, it's not even showing up on my screen. Casey, can you get them or no? I'm looking to see if I can right now. Uh, give me one second. Okay, I'll, I'm going to race you to it. Okay. <laughs> I got it. Darn. Um, but I haven't shared my screen yet, so you could have still called. <laughs> All right, go ahead. So this is not in the ideal format. Okay, thank you. Um, oh, here. No, that's not any better. Um, do you want to talk about them or do you want me to? Go ahead. That'd be great. Okay. Uh, currently, we have our gingerbread house exhibit. It is on display at the Los Altos Community Center in the Manzanita room. If you enter from the main lobby that's facing the library uh, or the history museum, it'll be immediately on your left. Um, it's an all glass room, so it's easy to see those um, gingerbread houses right away. You can come view them Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, there was a display last Saturday, but all of next week, still Monday and Thursday, you can still come view them. There is also a just listed here at the end of it, a social ornament making event that is this coming Saturday. Um, you do not have to pre-register or sign up for that. It's 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. There will be plenty of supplies available and it'll, it'll just be at the community center. So if you're interested in that or know anyone who is, please tell them to stop by. Um, our next one is a holiday sock drive also at the community center. And so that is new sock donations. It says here, infant to youth 16. You can drop those off anytime between now and uh, December 20th. There is a drop box. It, it says there's also one at State Street. There's also one inside our community center. Um, this, I haven't seen this one. <laughs> I can do this one. Okay, great. So um, this is our teen center open house. So on January 20th, we'll be hosting an open house for all ages, all teens, not all ages, but all teens. We'll do games, food, and music. So we're looking forward to that. And then the last one is we've sent a notice out to our commissions, inviting them to wake up early in the morning on New Year's Day and join us with our annual fun run. And um, it'll be on New Year's Day. So that'll be a Saturday. This year, because of COVID, we've staggered the starting times. 
and um, hopefully it, it's requiring pre-registration. So if you participate as a walker or participate as a volunteer, we hope to see you on January 1st. That's all I have. Any questions? Okay. So hopefully we'll see um, Commissioner Valadez. She asked some questions about our decorating, ornament decorating on Saturday. If you, if you guys want to stop by, it'd be great. We have a 13 and a half foot Christmas tree or holiday tree all decorated in the lobby. It's beautiful. Okay. Thank you, Director Leggy. So <clears throat> next we're going to go uh, go through the subcommittees. Rather than go through every single subcommittee, I think there's only a few subcommittees that, that have something to, to say. Um, and, and for starters, my understanding is that the Skate Park Feasibility Subcommittee um, has, has uh, some remarks and, and potentially uh, a desire to, to, to put something on the agenda. Uh, Commissioners Ye and Corrigan. Yeah, and um, thanks, uh, Chair Daly. I think uh, on this one, it's just going to be me speaking because um, it may end up being the situation where Commissioner Corrigan is going to have to recuse himself uh, based upon his geographic location to, to what we're talking about. Um, so this is this is something that that uh, Commissioner Corrigan and I and members of our community, including staff, have uh, spoken about. And it's, it's something that we're at a point where we're ready to kind of move ahead, but can't until it gets agendized. So that's just something we wanted to bring up. It's, you know, it's, um, it's very much something that we can do. There's space for it in our city. Um, the skate shop, uh, skate works, the, the existence of it in and of itself as a successful brick and mortar store um, indicates that skateboarding is popular and staff did indicate to us that the um, skate, I don't know what you'd call it, but like the skateboard summer program was their most popular program in the city's history by far. Well, if, if both members of the subcommittee would like to see this agendized, I will throw my name behind it too, and that'll give us enough people to put this on the agenda. Director Leggy, do, do we, you know off the top of your head, do you think we have room for this on our January agenda? Does that make sense yeah. to you guys, or should we be looking at February? I'm open here. I'm just looking for feedback from staff and, and the subcommittee. Yes, we have room on the agenda at this point. What do you think, Commissioner Ye and Commissioner Corgan? Would you prefer January or February? Hey, it's up to you, Chair. Yeah, I'm I'm flexible as well. So let's let's take it up in January. Sounds, sounds good. Okay. Staff will be in touch with the subcommittee in terms of time frames of when their report or information is needed. Thank you. Great. Um, and, and, and now I'll just sort of open it up. Uh, are there any other subcommittees that, that have um, news or something that they want to report? Uh, Commissioner Valadez, I see you looking like you might want to. I just want to ask um, uh, Commissioner Moore, Vice Chair Morris if uh, we want to just give a really brief update on what we talked about and we don't have a formal report at, uh, at all. Um, Vice okay. Chair Morris, I'll defer to you if you would prefer to not update at this time. I'm fine with updating. I, I've, yeah, I'd say make it really brief because we don't, I mean, do you want me to do it? And you can pitch in and if I miss something. So basically the JEDI uh, subcommittee is, has been in conversation with uh, Recreation Director Donna Leggy. We are, of similar mind that we're in a little bit of a holding pattern here. Um, we're waiting on uh, some of the things with staff for the poor in place that may be coming into play in the parks. And then we're also all very excited to go to the um, conference and learn more about more of the equipment. We did meet with um, a rep from the, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the name of the rep, Landscape. Landscape. Thank you. And, and so we did, and we went from park to park with her and got information from her for features that could be added in. And um, so we're, we're still working on it. We're still moving forward. 
we have documents put together for with information and um, we'll just keep moving. Great. All right, if there are if there are no other subcommittees who want to um, report or comment on their ongoing work, then I will go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Meeting adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah. Happy holidays. See you next year. Holidays. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.